Hi, and welcome back to the channel. As a company culture coach, I've used Miro Board consistently for the past four years in my work to facilitate remote team sessions. But I've not only found Miro useful for my work, I've also found it an incredible tool for my life, which is why in this video, I'm going to share the five ways I use Miro Board in my work and in my life. Some people would say that I'm obsessed with Miro. I'm gonna let you be the judge of that after this video. The first way I use Miro Board is with my one-to-one -one coaching clients. So predominantly, I coach founders, CEOs, and team level managers. And the reason I use Miro Board in my coaching sessions is because it's a beautiful visual way for us to keep track of the sessions and provide a ecosystem of where I can share resources, frameworks, anything they need so that it's not all within their emails or within direct messaging. It just creates this really visual space where we can not only set the goals that they have for their coaching, but also collaborate asynchronously when we're not in sessions together. The second way that I use Miro board and probably the most common way that I use Miro is for remote team sessions. Now, many of my clients are based not in the UK, they are all over the world. And for some of them, they are predominantly remote first, which means they do not have a centralized head office. They are dispersed around the world, which means remote sessions are vital for the creation of their culture, for the participation in particular aspects of building their culture. So when it comes to remote sessions in particular, I will always use Miro board because there are so many interactive elements that it makes sure that everyone can participate in creating something together. Now, the beautiful thing with Miro is that you can make it so bespoke and get so creative with the team sessions that you're designing. And my particular favorite part of the Miro community is the Miro multiverse, where essentially people share templates and activity ideas, so whenever I get stuck for something, I go into the community and see what templates or activities I could maybe um, copy and obviously contribute to those who have created them and add them into my workshop. I had a conversation with someone the other day that asked me what I did and I said, oh, I, I do quite a lot of um, remote culture training sessions. And they were like, gosh, that must be so boring for the people involved. And I just thought, you have never been to a Miro board workshop with me because trust me, you would not be bored. The third way I use Miro board is for my own personal business operations. So I like to think of this as everything that I try and organize and plan and manage in my business is all on a dedicated Miro board. And that means I have things like the goals that I'm trying to achieve every quarter. I put KPIs in there. I have a space for my personal development and personal growth. All of it is within Miro. And I love the fact that it's just so agile and I can move it around all the time and redesign it as I see fit. I absolutely hate Excel spreadsheets. And so for me, Miro board just enables me to have complete agility and adaptability and make things very visual. When it comes to really thinking about the goal setting of my business, to think about my learning and development journey, all of those kind of aspects are all within my business operations Miro board. Now, the third way that I use Miro board and probably the way I am most proud of discovering is what I call my board for my third brain. This essentially is a board that I've designed and created to help me capture information that I don't know where to place or store or hold. For example, when you find an amazing article about something and you bookmark it, and then weeks and months later, you're like, oh my gosh, I've got so many bookmarks. Or if you're like me, you read lots of books and you prefer a physical, tangible book and you end it with lots of sticky notes inside of it and lots of annotations and highlights. Where does all of that go? How do you categorize all of that information? Well, I have created my third brain in Miro, where essentially every book that I read has then been indexed and categorized and all of the sticky notes and highlighting has been placed there. 
I also put things such as articles or blogs that I've been sent where I can save them. And it just essentially helps me to curate information and index and categorize it for myself. So that, for example, if someone says to me, hey, can you give me as much information about decentralized roles and responsibilities? I have a whole index card full of articles, frameworks, all sorts, so that I can just send them that and not have to kind of squirrel around trying to find different pieces. So for me, my third brain is probably the thing that I use the second most to my business operations because it is just so helpful for me to get all of this information out of my brain and into a Miro board. Okay, the fifth and final way that I use Miro board is content planning, which is kind of an obvious one really. With this YouTube channel and with my podcast, I get so many ideas and there are so many different things that I want to create that I have to have a space for that. Otherwise, I would just get totally off track and off in a tangent in so many different ways. So Miro board really helps me to content plan my podcast and my YouTube channel and essentially helps me store and save ideas when I think of something. So otherwise I've seen lots of people have like sticky notes all over their office or all over their house. This just feels really way too much for me. Whereas Miro helps me place it in there and then I can kind of organize it as I need to. So for example, this is a little bit of a glimpse of my YouTube planning. So I have content buckets, so specific themes or areas of the channel. And then what I will do is I will plan out the next three to four months of specifically which videos I'm going to record and publish in those months, just so that it helps me plan, but also prioritize which ideas I want to bring forward first. If you'd love to experiment with Miro board, I have dropped a link below for you to go and check it out. I believe it is free to set up an individual account. And then depending on how many boards you open and how many team members you want, it does go into a paid subscription. But I would say it is well worth it if you use it as much as I do. And I would love to know in the comments below which type of Miro board you've been inspired to create or if you have a new idea because jokes aside, I love discovering new Miro board ideas. So drop it below. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.